Thunder, 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 Thunder Geeks are live! Hello, Thundarians! You're listening to 102.7 FM, C-I-L-U, or around the world at luradio.ca. I'm Andrew. I'm Rob. And I'm Megan. And we're your Thunder Geeks. Of course, that was Kessel Run with Player 2. Very appropriate for our show, so a lot of big things happened this week. Oh, but you the forgot th- the third thing we're on. Of course, the third thing we're on, we're actually streaming video over Periscope right now. So if you haven't already, go download that Periscope Periscope mobile app or visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash thundergeekspeak. We should have a link for Periscope right up on the top there and you can take a peek into the studio. Hello, folks. Okay, so let's start off like we talk about every week. What nerdy thing did we do this week? So, Rob, I've been hearing you're on a Star Wars binge right now. I am indeed. I've been watching the Clone Wars TV show, and I've also been really enjoying playing the Knights of the Old Republic game. Oh, you started playing Knights of the Old Republic? Okay, wait, 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 wait. wait. Which Knights of the Old Republic game is it? There's more than one? There's, like, three right now. Well, um, there's Knights of the Old Republic, which was the the Xbox game and stuff. He's playing the MMO, I believe. You're playing Old Republic, aren't you? That's what I think. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> well, the Old Republic's actually coming with a pretty big expansion right now. Uh, we got that. We got that announced. Um, but I'm curious what your impressions are with the Clone Wars because for me, uh, watching the Clone Wars redeemed as much of the prequel trilogy as I realistically could. Well, the Clone Wars TV show is. I'm enjoying it, but every time I want to get invested in a character, mm-hmm. I just remember they die. They live. That becomes Vader. That, yeah, I, I do see that where, I mean, I think that's something that suffers from the prequel trilogy as well. Because you knew where everything was eventually going to end. It all depended on just how you got there. Um, one of my big questions for you is, well, how do you feel about Ahsoka Tano? Because she's someone where they, when they introduced her in that really terrible animated Clone Wars movie... I hated her with a fiery passion because it was just, you know, the typical kid character, sidekick, golly gee willikers, you know, and I'm just, ugh. However, what, since you've been watching The Clone Wars, what are your thoughts on her now? I like her. She's not like a terrible character. Not the best ever, but as a, as a young Padawan, I get her choices and everything, and considering Anakin's the one training her, I get her attitude. So I, I know you haven't got to, you're up to season four yet, so I, I won't try to spoil any of the big things that happen. Obviously, you know that Anakin does not stay with Ahsoka by the end of the series since she isn't there for... Uh, episode three. Episode three. And also she isn't there for like uh, the New Hope either. However, uh, Star Wars Rebels also premiered, and that's something that uh, we got, we finally had it revealed. Uh, it was one of the big questions left at the end of the Clone Wars is what happened to Ahsoka Tano. Um, at the end of the last season of Star Wars Rebels... They introduced uh, Ahsoka, and it was revealed that she was actually behind the Rebel Alliance that we see within, uh, you know, the main uh, Star Wars trilogy. And so we had the premiere uh, uh, this week. Oh, and Vader shows up. So, yeah, no, um, absolutely amazing premiere. I'm so excited because with the last season, they were on Lothal, um, you know, some backwater planet on the outskirts. Doing what they can to, you know, steal from the rich, take from the poor, steal from the Empire, give it to the people of Lothal. Kind of more of a Robin Hood thing. Wasn't really involved into the Rebel Alliance, to their knowledge, until the very end. So now we start off there um, doing a raid on an Imperial fleet trying to steal uh, shield generators. And they end up getting drawn back to Lothal because of uh, Vader's now putting more of a vice grip on Lothal, trying to, you know, essentially manipulate them by abusing the planet so much, they'll come back to try to help. And they end up getting a call from who was one of their main villains during the first season, the, well, leader of, well, leader of uh, Lothal. Um, and what ends up happening is, is when Vader shows up, uh, uh, oh, I'm trying to remember their names now. It's Ezra and... Oh, his name starts with a K. There's always one per show. It's it's the male Jedi uh, within uh, Star Wars Rebels. They're like, I feel very cold. So they feel Vader's presence from a long way away. And they introduce him as a credible threat. They crush him with an uh, ATST walker. And he lifts it up and keeps going. <laughs> yeah, Vader is... 
basically an unstoppable force. That's one thing. Intended. Oh yeah, no, of course. But that's one thing. I mean, you didn't really see within the original trilogy. I mean, limitations of effects and stuff. But you never saw Vader like you know why he was the one who you know finished off the rest of the Jedi. We went and hunted them down, and now you see he's like, oh, that's why he was so successful. Um, overall, I really like the premiere though. Well, once I'm done Clone Wars, I'll check out Rebels. Yeah, Rebels, yeah, like I said, it's just going into its uh, second season now. Um, with Rebels, since you're on season four, they have uh, another full season left with season five where you're going to see a lot of the big developments and you get a lot of the backstory of what uh, leads up to episode three. And then season six is kind of the leftovers they had for production since at that point it already got canceled. Yeah. Um, they actually do have, uh, they were doing the Star Wars presentation where they had a couple extra episodes that weren't finished uh, called The Bad Batch. Um, you get to see some of the more deformed clones, but they were deformed in specialized ways, so they become their own kind of black ops group. Uh, but that's really as far as we got with Rebels. I'd like to see this one with the mutated clones or whatever. Oh yeah, I mean with, uh, with the Clone Wars. For me, I've jumped headfirst back into Smash Bros. How um, come? Well, because Lucas came out finally, and... Well, I'm still kind of terrible. I'm not as good as, as I was with Brawl. The mechanics are definitely different. I see quite a bit of difference with how my playstyle was before. With the small tweaks they did, I have to change up how I'm playing now. Um, some good, some bad. Uh, what, they released a bunch of DLC characters for Smash Bros. and did a couple of tweaks. So they released uh, Lucas, who was my main in Brawl, so I'm really excited for that. Uh, most of his movesets still pretty much the same. Just some minor tweaking here with my strategies. However, I mean, oh, that landing leg hurts, hurts so much. Um, but there was uh, a bunch of other cool characters as well. Uh, one of the most notable ones is Ryu from Street Fighter. Ryu from what? Yeah, Ryu from Street Fighter. Oh, that's cool. Uh, well, Namco uh, and Capcom. I mean, uh, they've been pretty close with Brawl because uh, they've had Mega Man on there already. They have Ka Pac Man, and now we have Ryu. Um, cool thing about Ryu, though, is his moveset is pretty much still the same from the Street Fighter game. So you still have Hadouken, you still have Shoryuken, and you still have uh, you know, his classic movesets. Um, really, I, ha I'm trying I have to see him more in competitive play first to see really where he's going to rank on tier. Uh, I do like Ryu a lot right now because uh, he's pretty quick and he's got a decent reach with his feet. Um... Yeah, um, some of the other ones that came out, I'm trying to remember, because I downloaded all of them, but I haven't played them all yet. <laughs> of course you did. Did you, Okay, so you've been playing a couple more maps on Splatoon 2 as well, right? Yes, they, they've been releasing more maps. I'm absolutely, see, my problem with going to Smash Bros. right now is I'm really good at Mario Kart, and I'm pretty good at Splatoon, and then I go to play Smash Bros., and I'm like, oh, I'm a scrub. I'm <laughs> well aware the level of competitive play that comes in when you're playing fighters, and I cannot match that yet. <laughs> I remember playing Guilty Gear um, on my PlayStation 3, and I was online, and I just, ah, oh, I just got owned so many times by the same person. It was awful, and I was, and I was like, man, I just like can't even block. I just, I don't know. I just play it for for fun mostly. But. I'm I'm really gonna put myself to the test tomorrow, um, because one of my friends has been bugging me for a long time. He's like, you gotta play Smash Bros with me. And my two big downsides were, is I couldn't find the GameCube adapter. This thing is impossible to find in stores. And yes, I should have ordered it online, but then you have to wait and. The, I never really got around to it. I was hoping that, you know, by the time uh, DLC came out, I'd finally find one in stores. I can just hook up my GameCube uh, controllers. Yeah. Did not happen. Then I found out I'm really dumb. I didn't know that the Smash Pads they released actually hook up to the bottom of the Nintendo <laughs> Wii controller. I never thought. I'm just like, oh, I'll just wait for the Wii U adapter. I mean, I, like, I d wasn't really thinking about it. And then I'm like, oh, okay. Um... Because one of my big problems was, is I was trying to play with the Wii, uh, like the Wii Pro remote with the regular setup where you have the four buttons instead of the GameCube controller. Problem is, it's so slight, but because of the different position of the buttons and where my thumb rests, I'd end up hitting my jump button anytime I'm trying to use my special attacks, mm -hmm. and I'd end up using my B button anytime I meant to hit the A button. So, yeah, especially with fighters where accuracy and, you know, Precision is everything. Um, if you want to be really good at a fighter, learn how to dodge for one, learn how to fake out your opponent, and make sure you do the right move exactly at the right time. Timing is very important. 
I remember I was actually pretty good at Soul Calibur 2, and then, I don't know, they just released so many of them, and by the time it came to the last game, I was just like, no, Shanghua's not even on it, I don't even care anymore. <laughs> I was like, oh. So upset. Yeah, well, for me, um, that's usually my big blind spot with games, is I'm not typically into fighters. Um, it's just, uh, it's a genre I definitely respect. It's a genre I enjoy playing, but there's a level of sophistication and there's a level of gameplay that you get with fighters that you have to put a huge time investment in. Because you not only need to know how your character plays, you need to know how everyone else's character plays. This is true. And especially with, you know, a cast versus uh, Smash Bros., that is a lot of different movesets, combos, characters that you're learning to not only avoid and counter, but to be able to counter-attack against. Yeah, I wasn't sure what made Smash Bros, like, especially for the 64, so engaging. Something about it was just, it was fun. And, you know, it just, uh, I don't know what it is about fighters, but some of them just get me. Others I just can't play, but there's like that three. There's Soul Calibur, Guilty Gear, and Smash Bros. But I don't play Smash Bros. anymore. I can play it on the 64. Well, the Smash Bros., the reason I was drawn to, it, uh, drawn to it is mostly because of simplified moves. I hate Tekken. I hate Tekken with a fiery passion because I don't want to do 16 buttons to do a high punch. Oh. I cannot do <laughs> dial them in fighters where I have to do like a 20-button combo just to do my move, I do not have that type of uh, finger accuracy. I admire and respect the people who can. I am definitely not one of them. I forgot that I got into to Dead or Alive for a while there, too. I had the, the trilogy that was released, and then uh, there was a new one coming out. It looked really, really, really good. I just, I don't know why I like Dead or Alive so much, <laughs> but it's just, it was a fun one. As well I'm going to guess me. Jiggle Physics. No, it wasn't. I was, I was always playing as like the more reserved characters, like the characters with more clothing. So it, what, really, you're like the one person who's not playing Dead or Alive <laughs> for the Jiggle Physics. Isn't, isn't that the only reason to play the game? <laughs> Well, at least the volleyball version. I was going to say, if I wanted to play Dead or Alive for the Jiggle, Jiggle Physics, I would play Dead or Alive Volleyball. That's a good point. Yeah. And if I wanted to play any game for Jiggle Physics, I would just go back to Hunting Ground on the PlayStation 2. So, Megan, what about you? Anything nerdy this week? I haven't been doing anything nerdy just besides playing Fallout New Vegas, because I'm kind of getting ready for the new one coming out. For Fallout 4? Yeah, I'm trying to, uh, you know get through Fallout New Vegas because the last time I tried to play it I screwed up my game entirely I accidentally went to Caesar's um, place across the lake mm -hmm. um, and I brought Boone with me and Boone's quest is to kill everyone in, in Caesar's Legion so we went there we killed everybody and then Benny was there and I was like oh Benny I know you shot me in the head but I forgive you because I'm trying <laughs> to play the good campaign good karma so I let Benny go and then I was looking for the platinum chip that you're supposed to um, obtain for Mr. House, the big robot guy. And uh, yeah, the chip just disappeared. It was a game, and it was a glitch in the game, and it just the platinum chip was everything. So I had to restart. Oh. But you know what? I want to hear more about Rob's character in um, Knights of the Old Republic. Oh. Or Old Republic. <laughs> Uh, there's not much to the character. I literally just started. Okay, but <laughs> what race are you? Human. You're human. Okay, so you didn't go with like an alien character at all? Boring. What? Okay, what are the other options? Because I haven't touched the Old Republic at all. Because for me, getting into MMOs, the only one I really got into is FF14. Yeah. And that's just because, again, time suck. I have so many things <laughs> I'm trying to do all at the same time. Sitting down and playing an MMO is hard. Well, because I got the free version, I didn't have options. Oh, well, because I assume oh. you can play as a Twi'lek. I know you can play as a Twi'lek. I, I want to be a Wookiee, but I don't know if that was an option or not. I don't think it is. You want to be a Wookiee Jedi? Yeah. Have you? Oh, I don't know if you've gotten that far within uh, the Clone Wars yet. Have you seen the uh, the Padawans yet? I have not. I saw Chewbacca, which raises the question, how old is Chewbacca? Not as old as you would think. I mean, he is older, and I'm assuming Wookiees have a very long lifespan mm -hmm. because when we saw the Force uh, Awakens trailer... Chewbacca still looks the same age. Even though he should look like Grandpa Wookiee, <laughs> if you remember the Christmas special. Well, of course, but we don't know how old he was, though. So, and I mean, there's only 30 years between, like, the start of Episode 1 and Episode 4. And then there's the 30 years now. Well, yeah. So, I mean, how... 
Well, I mean, he's probably um, let's go. With, well, let's go with Wookies have a very long lifespan. I've never actually looked into that. What's the science of the Wookie age? You meet a people listening. If you or watching or any Twitter, Facebook, Periscope, tweet at us. Figure out how how long a Wookie can live. Then uh, tweet at us at how old eights. Chewbacca is. Yeah. Because I, I know in uh, Night Shield Republic for the Xbox, um, you can actually go to uh, Kashik and there's a group of them there, but I don't think it ever specifically says how long. I don't remember how long Wikis live. Oh, I have the answer. That was that fast. Was, that was fast. That was really fast. 200 years old, apparently. Okay, so who, <laughs> who answered that question? I want to know. I, I went to Google real quick. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? I'm going to cheat here because now I'm really curious. How old is Chewbacca? Chewbacca is 200 years old. Huh. Wow. At least, at least, like, like I know. I figured, th- I thought that they would live into their hundreds at least, but I wasn't expecting 200s. Wow. Well, I mean, it's, uh, you know, alien species, so, like, different lifespan and all that shenanigans. I love Athorians. They're my favorite. I don't remember. What's, who's that race? I can't, uh... I don't recall. You don't see them very often, but in uh, Knights of the Republic, they're very prominent. Uh, characters and they're like these hunched over aliens that walk funny and they have like four legs or do they have four legs or just really big legs I don't remember but their like faces kind of look like a slug and they have like really deep throaty voices and they just like ooh do blow lo lo and like they make deep throaty ooh blow 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 (laughs) so now we know why Megan likes that species (laughs) (laughs) I just think they're cute I don't know Anyways, so you're uh, which which class of uh, Jedi Knight? Jedi Knight. Yeah, because you're just going uh, free to play right now, aren't you? Yeah. So you don't have a different color for your lightsaber. You can nope. only just go. I don't even have a lightsaber. I've got like a training thing. Oh, a vibro sword, probably yep. vibro blade. Yeah, the the older stuff. Uh, yeah, I, I gotta wonder. Um, well, do you think uh, if you get into it, do you think you're gonna go with the uh, with uh, the full game eventually? I'd probably go console version because. Yeah. The, I'm not used to keyboard controls. You know what I'm going to do for you? I'm going to lend you my Xbox, my, my first-gen Xbox, and I'm going to lend you Knights of the Old Republic, and you're going to play it, and it's going to blow your mind. Yeah, no, uh, that was... I, I'm excited for them to do more, um, especially because that was one of the things that was announced at E3, that they're going to be doing more with uh, the Old Republic uh, you know, setting uh, for Star Wars games. Knights of the Old Republic was one of those games where it kind of came out of nowhere because we had good Star Wars games before. Yeah, um, Battlefront. You know, and... Battlefront. Um, I used to play the Super Star Wars games back on the Super Nintendo, which are super hard now going back, and I'm not sure how I beat them as a kid. Lego Star Wars is really fun. I, well, all of the Lego games have been surprisingly fun. Yeah. They're more fun than they really deserve to be because you're like, you know, it's blatant product placement cross-promotion, and, you know, uh, and it's... Hey, Lego Star Wars... Like the actual It's physical. amazing. Yeah. It's always been a dream of mine to get the Lego Millennium Falcon, but that thing's like 300 bucks. That's one thing that's sad is um, since Disney has Star Wars now, is we're probably not going to see much more for like media when it comes to Lego Star Wars. Uh, Disney made a statement a while back that, yeah, there's not going to be a Lego Star Wars movie. Dang it. I, I just want my Lego Millennium Falcon. Those ones are really expensive. 300 though. bucks. Yeah. Uh, funny thing about Legos is they're actually huge on the black market. Really? Yeah. It's this weird thing. Um, the story's been passed around the internet a few times, but it's uh, actually legit. Um, with the Lego sets, because of how much uh, a single second sell for, especially one that's out of production, there are huge smuggling rings. On <laughs> th- There was a couple like huge heists in the States where... They broke into, like, Toys R Us and stuff, and all they stole was sets of Lego. I'm just imagining, like, these people being like, oh, yeah, okay, so we have a kilo of cocaine, and here's some kidneys, and, oh, I'm Lego Millennium Falcon. Well, I mean, the reason that it, uh, besides the fact that the, the Legos are valuable, um, they're untraceable. Like, it's really, they're really easy to move on uh, online auction sites, um... And they're also, you know, like, you can't really track it like you can money, but for, for these thieves, it is as good as money. Hmm. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to see here, because uh, there was a recent heist with it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, uh, it was 800 sets of Lego worth 3,500, oh, 35,000 pounds. Uh, okay, so that's a, that's a UK article, but I assume that's a lot of money. About seven thousand. 
Oh, okay, here. Police foil $100,000 criminal mastermind Lego shoplifters. <laughs> yeah, Lego goes for an insane amount, um, especially for, like, out-of-date pieces. There's some pieces, well, they'll go for ten grand just on their own, like a single Lego piece. A single piece? Just to complete a set. I remember I used to have this um, this pink Lego set. It was super old, and, like, even when I was playing with it, it felt, like, really, really vintage to me. And then it just disappeared, and I remember it had, like, those clear pieces, and they would just hide on the rug, and you would step on it, and it would just be, ah, agony. Yeah, okay, uh, here it is. It's insane Lego collector spends $15,000 on a single piece. What was the piece? Uh, let's see here. It had to have been gold, or, like, solid gold. Well, no, no. Like, um, Lego, the company, after 30 years of work, give you a solid Lego brick? The piece is from the discontinued Lego Bionicle line. Um, one of a kind whoa, whoa, platinum whoa. Avaki Mask of Light. So apparently it's made of platinum, so that's probably why it's worth so much. Wow. And the fact that it's one of a kind. But yeah, single Lego piece, $15,000. <laughs> <laughs> and people say that you're wasting your money, Rob. Well, those people are mostly my parents in there, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can't blame them too much. I mean, I, I have my game collection, which I've I've continued to expand and and ignore. And no, 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 I've 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 been playing. I've been playing. I've been playing Smash, and I've been playing Splatoon. So well, you got to get on Stick of Truth because the sequel's coming. The sequel is coming. Um, I plan. Uh, what I'm hoping to do is I'm hoping to get a stream box in the near future. Then we can start streaming over. I'll play through Stick of Truth. You know what? We'll the, go ch chill on my couch. There's gonna be a lot of swearing, especially from me. <laughs> it's well, a South Park game. I think it's okay. Yeah, we'll be streaming. We'll, we'll stream it on Twitch, so it'll be all good. I remember, like, I was just sitting in my living room with my roommate, and I was playing Fallout New Vegas, and I couldn't remember where I was because I have a terrible sense of direction. I was just swearing belligerently and getting so angry. Were you just terrible at it? No, I just have no sense of direction, and I can't even follow a map. It's it's awful. So you said no, but then you answered of, I was just terrible at figuring out where to go. So the answer was, Megan, you were just terrible at it. I'm get not good, terrible. Get, get good, scrub. The, I'm not terrible at the game. I'm just terrible at sense of direction. I have no navigational skills. Real life, on games, None. Ah, oh, that's okay. We we got we we can get lost enough for you. <laughs> so uh, I think we'll take our first break here, forks. Of course, you're listening. Forks, forks, yeah, forks. <laughs> because I replaced my L's with R's. So after the break, I think uh, let's jump into Father's Day stuff. But uh, we're gonna take our short break. Of course, you're listening to 102.7 FM C I L U or around the world at L U Radio dot C A. We're your Thunder Geeks, and we'll be right back. And of course, we're back. You're listening to 102.7 FM CILU or around the world at luradio.ca. Or... Or we're streaming on Periscope. Uh, go to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash thundergeekspeak or download the Periscope app following us on Twitter. And you can watch, take a peek into the studio and you can see uh, us video live. But that was Brental Floss with Final Fantasy VII with lyrics. So we'll go to that. We'll get to that in a bit. But first, it's Father's Day. So let's talk about our favorite fathers from pop culture and nerdy stuff. Austin Powers is Faja. He's uh, Farger. Uh, He's uh, I'm, I'm going to go with a no on that <laughs> one. Let's, let's, let's talk about good dads. Let's talk about good dads first. Okay, you go pick, pick who you like. My favorite dad would have to be probably Goofy. Especially that that shows quite a bit in uh, the Goofy movie, which I think is a really uh, a lot of people have fond memories of it, but no one really you know talks about it in the same vein as you do like the main Disney canon, like you know the Lion King, which I mean also has a great father in Mustafa, or like the Little Mermaid. But it's probably one of my favorite like '90s Disney movies. Um, Goofy movie, you know, came off the, uh, did you ever see the Goofy movie? You're looking at me like I'm crazy. I watched the Goofy movie a long time ago. I haven't seen it recently. Um, I, they I'm were gonna... on like a road trip or something. I yes. Don't know. Oh, okay. Okay. I absolutely love the Goofy movie as a kid. Um, it picks up essentially from the animated sitcom they had. that used to air on the family channel way, way back in the day for us. I loved that show. I watched it like religiously. So, um, what's happening is, uh, Go oh, Max gets into trouble on the last day of school because he sets up this elaborate thing where he gets to dance as Powerline, who is totally not Michael Jackson. <laughs> I thought he was Vanilla Ice. No, no, you know, that could be either, you know, generic 90s rap star. Um, 
uh, the, the, there actually is a legit singer for that, but I can't remember his name. But then this, the music's part of the best part of the, uh, the movie as well. So what Goofy does is he takes his son Max on uh, the road trip he was taken on when he was a child, going on all the same stops and you know trying to have that last meaningful bond with his son before you know you know he's graduating high school. So before he goes off and starts his life, and also wants to keep him on you know, a good path and not wind up in jail. Max, however, has a different idea. He wants to go to the Powerline concert because he uh, he uh, lied to his friend saying his dad knows Powerline. And they're going to be on stage. So shenanigans ensue. However, the movie eventually ends with absolutely no consequences for lying. They make it onto the stage through, you know, Goofy getting on board, you know, trying to help Max. There's no consequences. Goofy and Max both realize they, they were wrong in their approach because Goofy's like, I'm holding too strongly onto the past. And Max is like, I just don't want anything to do with my dad. Yeah, oh, okay, that's a good point. That there's no shame in being like your dad. It, it's definitely a great uh, Father's Day movie, I would say. Because doesn't he, um, doesn't he laugh like Goofy? Yeah, and, and that's... then he tries to like cover it up all the time. Yes. Uh... Yeah. So because he's ashamed of being seen as you know the goof and screw up that you know his father is you know usually made fun of for. So he's like, I want to be hip and cool and you know a teenager. But and, yeah, and weirdest Polly Shore cameo to date. <clears throat> Polly he, Shore was yeah, his yeah. best friend. Yeah, yeah, the leading uh, tower, the of leading cheese tower of cheese. I hated. Oh, I hated you, it. You, you hate Polly Shore? I just hate okay. this. Okay, so that squeeze cheese from the can. Oh. Oh God! It just it just one of my pet peeves. I just can't. You even. can't. You can't squeeze cheese from the can. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> So, um, how about you guys? Rob, who's your favorite father from pop culture? Um, okay, I know I'm the only one here who's really watched it, but I'm, I know there's other viewers. Uh, Kaido Nakamura from Heroes. Hiro oh. Nakamura's father. I do not watch Heroes whatsoever. Who is that and why? Okay, the reason I love Kaido Nakamura is, first off, to know Hiro. Hiro is us. He's the, he's the regular comic book geek who wishes for superpowers. Yes. But he actually gets them in the show where he can stop uh, or control space and time. He can pretty much teleport and go anywhere in time he wants. His father wants to put him on like the track to be a businessman, and it's like, mm -hmm. get off this foolish path of a hero. But then he's like, you know, you're actually saving lives out there. You're doing good. You got my blessings. And there's a quite sad uh, spoiler alert part in season three. Yeah, no. it's old. Oh, wow. So it was after the writer's strike. Yeah. Was it season two? No, it was season two, my bad. Before the writer's strike, when yeah. the show was still good. Yeah, where uh, Hero finds out after his time travel adventures that he comes back in a point in time where his father was murdered. So he goes back in time and tries to save his dad, and his dad's like, if it's my time, it's my time. Just know I was proud. And it's like a really Aww. touching moment. Uh, cry. It, it's a, and Kaido Nakamura is played by George Takai. Oh, nice. I didn't know that. That's yeah. actually a really good role for him. Oh, the best part is, for most of season one, uh, Hero makes Star Trek references. <laughs> so to have his father be uh, Sulu is amazing. And, but the thing is, George Takai doesn't play this role campy. He is, like, serious and stern. Oh. He's actually a little intimidating in the role. Yeah, no, I, I don't think I've actually... Outside of Star Trek, I can't really, you know, think of a role that I've seen Takai in other than, you know, that were our, that are nods to his role as Sulu, so... Yeah. But he's, like, legitimately serious, intimidating. Like, he he's pretty much facing down his assassin. What's he do? Grabs a sword, it's like, bring it. <laughs> and the thing is, Hero just flat out told him, it's like, this guy will kill you. And he's like, I know. Let's do this. So, Megan, what about you? Who's your favorite father figure from pop culture? I actually have a few of them. Fire away. <laughs> okay, so Ethan Mars from Heavy Rain, actually. Oh. Um, this, is a, this is a game that was made by... Oh, ah, sorry, I can't remember the name of the game company, so... <laughs> No but, worries. It's again Heavy Rain, one of those games I've had. Actually, I believe I've actually I started... played this one. Oh yeah. wow, I'm the only one who hasn't this time. <laughs> Anyways, so you play as Ethan Mars, or you can play as three other characters. But let's focus on Ethan for now. Um, and unfortunately, his for his youngest son, I think it's his youngest. Yeah, his youngest son gets into an accident and passes away. And Ethan tries to save him, like very 
he tries so hard to save him and he eventually gets PTSD because of it. Oh. So he's dude. trying to raise his his eldest son and he's a single father. His his wife divorced him because she couldn't handle the loss of her son, of one of her sons. Hmm. Um so he's trying to raise his his kid, you know, even though he's depressed mm-hmm. and he's trying to give him like a good upbringing and everything. So whenever he has him, he tries to tries really really hard to make his kid happy. Um, however, the the child just seems really distant as well. Anyways, so Ethan suffers from PTSD, and unfortunately, his son gets abducted by the origami killer. <clears throat> and Ethan has to go through a bunch of different trials to try and save his son. So <laughs> he has to do crazy things like shoot an- shoot a human being, shoot another human being, um, you know, crawl through glass. With tasers above him. With tasers above him. He has to uh, drive down a freeway backwards. um, And he also has to cut off his own finger. Huh. And then he still has to find out where his son is and save him from drowning. So you said he had a few. So who who was your number two? Um, Marlin from Finding Nemo. Yeah, that's a good point. He spends the entire movie trying to find his son because they just got separated. Funny thing about that movie and the inaccuracy of clownfish. <laughs> so, um, clownfish can actually change their sex, and when the uh, so the uh, it's a matriarchy, so the you know, you know alpha clownfish will be the female and will do the breeding. When that clownfish dies. The next in line will switch sex. So, Nemo's father, if we were following clownfish anatomy, should have become his mother. What? Wow. Right after, yeah, right after the movie starts. That's confusing. I know. Um, also, talking about fish, actually, my favorite father's... I the butt. <laughs> <laughs> I touched the butt. I'm the butt toucher. Anyways, um, speaking of fish, one of my favorite fathers, seahorses. <laughs> That's just because they have male pregnancy. You're like, yes, we get revenge this time. No, 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 no. Because all they do is carry them in their pouch. Like they don't, they don't have to like the pains or anything. They just carry them around until they're ready to hatch. And they're like, be free. Yeah, no, I, I've seen them. They kind of burst out from him in this <laughs> little tiny seahorse horror of a birth. It's cute. I don't know. I think it's cute. Male birth is cute. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> And seahorses are weird that's really uh also another um father figure that i think is really good is arthur weasley from harry potter oh why why um because their family is really poor i mean arthur works really really hard in the ministry yeah i always wondered why they're poor because they have magic can't they just magic everything in there <laughs> i wonder if there's an explanation for this yeah uh, but think it, being poor makes them more humble makes them more appreciative of everything right I, I always visualize Arthur Weasley as not so much a bad dad, a clueless dad. Because in the first movie where Harry's just kind of sitting there, he just looks at him and goes, and who are you? And the look on his face just makes me think it's like, oh, you forgot you had a child? Because it's like, <laughs> he's got that many where it's like, crud, did I have another one? Did, um, did, did, I, did I forget one? Let's see, we got the, the two that look the same, the weird one, the girl. The one that goes and trains dragons. So, yeah. For all you know, he could have been thinking, it's like, did I forget one again? I, I, well, he does have a lot of kids. And the thing is, I still want to know. I'm going to throw that question out to Twitter here. So tweet us at ThunderGeeks for more of you. Uh, for those of you who are hardcore Harry Potter geeks, I want to know, why are the Weasleys still poor if they have magic? Why do they live in a dumpy house? And theoretically, they could, you know, magic up a nice, much nicer house. We're well, throwing this one at you, Potterheads. I've always just thought it was because magic does have limitations and rules. But, I mean... We've we've seen magic do and then you know a quite a lot of things. I mean, we see you know even you know it, it cleans for them like where it's you know doing the dishes for them and stuff. So mm-hmm. why does everything look so dirty and poor when they have magic that can clean for them? I didn't think <laughs> that the Weasleys looked dirty and poor. I felt like they looked more cozy and humble. Ah, uh, I think <laughs> no. Minor details. Minor details. I think uh, a big one for uh, for me, um, I won't talk about the finale yet for Game of Thrones. However, Game of Thrones is a series that's very much centered on family. 
And because it follows, you know, a patriarchal lineage, the, the father is, you know, always the figurehead of the family and holds a lot of sway. A lot of great and terrible fathers within uh, Game of Thrones. Um, most notable being, you know, Ned Stark, who, uh, well, I mean, it's been enough years, you know, uh, meets his uh, demise at the end of the first season there and watching him raise, you know, his five children. Um, one of the ones that really hurt people, though, that happened this season was Stannis. Now, Stannis... Um, appeared to be a really great father to his um to his daughter who had this disease known as grayscale um essentially what happens when you get grayscale is it eventually takes over your body and you die or at least theoretically um stannis went through great pains to stop the illness for his daughter so she could survive but her, half of her face is still scarred with this you know scaly looking skin um very sweet girl stannis his storyline is uh what's that happening is he's being manipulated by the this red priestess melisandra uh, and into believing he is the prophesized hero for the lord of light and that he's going to take the uh the iron throne and you know rule rest rule westeros so second last episode um spoiler alert for those of you well, i won't spoil it stannis does something very horrible and almost irredeemable, though he does get his comeuppance, it ends up being uh, quite a big turning point for him in the finale, but oh man, Twitter's reaction was insane on that. He tries that. to kill his daughter. Yeah, it was right after the Sansa controversy too, so after the the uncomfortableness between uh, Sansa and Ramsay Bolton, yeah, then we have um, uh, <laughs> not a fun Father's Day moment. Though that's, that's an interesting thing that I thought, um... Because the Boltons, um, they are currently occupying Winterfell in Game of Thrones, um, home of the Starks, where Ned Stark is from. Yeah. He had a bastard son, um, and his with the name conventions, it was Ramsay Snow, um, and cruel, evil, insane, you know, bastard child. However, Roose ends up getting him legitimized as his heir because of the work that he did for his family. And that's one thing with Westeros is, I mean, there's definitely characters we can look at as evil, but everyone has their own perspective. And uh, I've, I've been watching a lot of History of Westeros things and seeing the history of Westeros, you know, and the history of battles being told from different characters' perspectives, and you see how they view it between, you know, one and the other. Um, so, final thoughts, fathers. A lot of dead dads when you look at it. Yeah, that's... But like we thought there's a lot of uncles, stepdads or adoptive fathers but a lot of dead fathers within uh the, you know especially with comic books we were trying to think of comic book ones but we kept coming up with you know father figures like you know Uncle Ben, Pa Kent, uh Alfred Pennyworth. Batman himself is adopted fa father for a bunch. Yeah, and well all the Robins and then eventually Damian Wayne. Um Well Damian Wayne was his kid but yeah. I I the legitimacy of that child would you think that Damien, or sorry, would you think that Bruce Wayne is a good father? That's hard to say because we're talking about a person who will bring, you know, 13 <laughs> to 16 year old boys in bright red clothing out into the field to go, you know, distract criminals while he punches them. <laughs> uh, he does give, you know, at troubled youth uh, an outlet. Uh, well, at least uh, that was the case with um, Dick Grayson and uh, Jason Todd where both of them were, you know, struck by tragedy and hardship in their life, and Batman gave them an outlet for that anger and, you know, pain that they had. Um, Timothy uh, Drake being the major exception, where he was the one who went out. He, fig he essentially applied to be Robin. Sorry, I just... Static Shock's dad was a pretty good dad, too. He was, he was actually a, a presence. He wasn't a, he wasn't a comic book dad that was dead. <laughs> There's always one thing that's uh, we also we run across a lot, and it kind of stems back to the template set by the honeymooners, where we kind of talked about before with Mother's Day, where it's the idiot dad trope. I mean, we see that quite a lot. Sometimes it works. I mean, like back in early episodes of The Simpsons, you know, uh, Homer was dumb but still loved his family. New Simpsons, it's uh... see the thing is, I'm so glad my dad doesn't listen to this show. But <laughs> the idiot father trope, I never saw it as a trope because I would look at my dad and be like. Yep. <laughs> there, there's one thing that always remind that sums up my father. 
I'm hmm. watching Stephen Hawking through the black hole. Yes. He comes in, sits down for five minutes, gets up, walks away, and goes, I, I don't understand. It's like black magic to me. And <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to be like, a, 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 like trying to form a connection. So I'm like, all right, Dad, what do you know about physics? And he looks at me befuddled and goes, they exist? <laughs> oh, no. Oh. At, at that point, I'm just like, yeah, no. So really exciting news this week. I think we should jump right into it. E3 finally happened. So, we've had a lot of ups and downs with E3 this year. Um, I want to start with the down first. What the heck was with Nintendo? What? I like the puppets. <sighs> I, I mean, I appreciate the direction they were going for, and I do love the Muppets, so I mean, don't put me on a lynch here. However, it seems like off timing for something to cross over because they did actually did have the Jim Henson workshop do uh, the puppets for Nintendo. Um, but yeah, it kind of all I have to think back because I mean they keep relying on the Reggie memes back from that fantastic E3 they had uh, back on the GameCube where they came out. You know, it's like you know it's uh, we're, we're here to kick something I can't say on the radio and take names and here at Nintendo we're making games. They came out proud, strong, it's like we're coming here to fight and then they start nah, they dropped a bunch of awesome games on us. This E three, nothing really excited me out of Nintendo. I mean the biggest thing I think we had was Star Fox Zero. I don't know, they're um the one I I can't remember the title, but it looked like a weird cross between like a Japanese teen idol thing. And an action game? Yeah, I, I oh, I didn't didn't even register with me. Um, it was very Japanese focused. That was really obvious. And I know I wish they would have had a better voiceover for the Nintendo Direct for American audience because it was really deadpan. I think maybe that's what kind of killed any excitement that might have came through if it you know was translated a little bit more enthusiastically. I also love the one joke the um. American CEO made where he was doing the push-ups and he's like, Nintendo 61, yeah. Nintendo 62, <laughs> Nintendo 63, Nintendo 64. That would be, uh, yeah, Reggie feels of me. He was the one I was talking about where he's essentially become this figurehead for Nintendo and I'm I'm, yeah, I, I'm I want them to keep innovating. I, I felt it was kind of lazy. I felt like they, they knew they didn't have much in their stable, and most of the things they showed off were like 3DS games. The Mario level designer looks like fun. Yeah, uh, Super Mario Maker. Uh, originally, it was known as Mario Maker. Now known as Super Mario Maker because uh, you can actually combine different uh, elements from uh, Super Ma the original Super Mario Bros., Super Mario Bros. 3, Super Mario World, and the new Wii, Wii and Wii U Super Marios. Is it going to be three-dimensional, like top view? Or? You can actually change the graphics oh uh, yeah but between the looks of each three so you can have it rather look like the original super mario bros super mario bros 3 world or as the 2.5d they have now i actually really like the new game the super mario world yeah that's the one super 3d mario world yeah I, the, the titles are weird for for me um i'm gonna see how super mario maker goes because I enjoy playing levels. I know this is definitely going to appeal to a lot of people. I mean, home uh, like uh, ROM hacks of Super Mario have been around for a long time, and this is allowing anybody to do a ROM hack essentially with the uh, with, you know beyond that, where they can combine you know all these different areas of Super uh, eras of Super Mario. I'm not the creative type though, so if I can play other people's levels, I think I'll be down for it. If I can only make my own and play them, because Nintendo is not usually the best for online sharing. No, no, they said in the thing that they, you could post them and other people could play. So the, this makes it similar to... It's gonna de well, I mean, are we going to need to know their friend code? Or are we going to need to have them on our friends list? Like, in Nintendo's online thing is always shaky. I'm going to wait until we have the specific details before I really get in depth with that. If you can play other people's just whenever you want, just choose whichever you want. This would make it really similar to uh, Little Big Planet. The, oh, that, that's what I'm thinking as well, and that's probably one of their big inspirations because Little Big Planet got in trouble for um, uh, Nintendo because people kept remaking Mario levels, which <laughs> of course are copyrighted, so like take them down. Um, so Mario Maker is going to be out on September 11th in North America, so <laughs> that's going to make for a lot of awkward levels that first day. I'm suspecting. <laughs> if Splatoon <laughs> is any indication, <laughs> we're going to have a fun time with V. All the people on 4chan are going to be like, "Hey, let's make something funny, haha." <laughs> so. The game I want to be excited for, but I'm not sure I can be, is Star Fox Zero. 
Um, because I've wanted a new Star Fox game for a long time. I never played Star Fox on the 64 or anything other, so I I have no idea. I have been a diehard Star Fox fan, excluding Star Fox Adventures, because that's not a Star Fox game. Um, Dinosaurs. It, it, actually, originally it was uh, Dinosaur Planet, and it was remade to be Star Fox Adve- Adventure. Like, hey, that character there, Crystal, looks like Star Fox. Eh, let's make it a Star Fox game instead. <laughs> Literally, that's what happened. Um, this one seems to be a prequel, because it's going to be uh, Peppy, who in the more modern games had retired, Falco and Fox. Slippy is nowhere to be seen, so that's that's a big question. Um, big thing that I noticed that they brought back, and they even mentioned it, uh, Star Fox 2, the cancelled game for the Super Nintendo. Um, one of the things they introduced in that game that you know, never came out in any other way was the R-Wing could transform into a walker. I was super excited about that until I found out you can only transform into that walker apparently after you've beat the level as an R-Wing. So it's kind of art of... I'm nervous. Platinum Games um, is going to be doing uh, Star Fox Zero. They've done things like Mad World. Uh, they did the Legend of Korra game. Um, uh, Vanquish. Um, they were also the team that originally did Okami back when, when they were with Capcom. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, they have some really great games and some not so good ones. It's just that they're they're not super popular. I would think that they're more like cult games. You know how there's movies that are cult well, well, Platinum Games is actually uh, doing quite a lot right now. Uh, they did uh, Metal Gear Rising as well. So they're really known as the Japanese developer that can nail action. I'm hoping that comes through with Star Fox. Metal Down. Gear Rising was the game with um, yes. the Raiden yes. that nobody played. That nobody played. <laughs> so yeah, uh, big downside though. Uh, so far, no online co-op, no online multiplayer. They're saying it's going to be a very single-player focused game, which... I hope it pulls through then. Um, I Right now, it doesn't look too different from Star Fox Assault, and I'm hoping that I get something new. I want the on-rail shooter, but I want something bigger. Like, I want more out of my Star Fox game. The thing is, is there's a lot of games out there that are coming out, and they are multiplayer online. Everything has online. Online, 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 online. The thing is, is there's so little games right now that are just single-player. Single player focused? Yeah. Even... Um, Let's, for example, The Last of Us. As soon as the online came out, there were so many people who were asking me, like, oh, do you play online? Online, online, <laughs> online. I'm like, no, I've only ever played the, single the, player. the story, the single player. So, and I, yeah. yeah they, so, I guess there is a market for the single player game. Um, <clears> they just uh, get all butthurt. They're like, yeah, story sticked. So, uh, let's, let's rapid fire through some of the other uh, Nintendo ones here. Um, one of the ones I am excited for, if I can find two other friends with a 3DS, because um, that's usually the big problem with multiplayer games is The Legend of Zelda Triforce Heroes. So, new Zelda uh, portable game. Um, looks like a classic Zelda. The big thing uh, that you, that is, um, is happening with this one is you get to play with two of your friends, and they each control a different Link. And you work together to solve a puzzle. So unlike with Four Swords, where it's more competitive, where you're competing for rupees, you're actively working together to solve puzzles and fight, and you can actually stack up with each other. Well, maybe some of our listeners will play with you. I have a Link Between Worlds 3DS, the large one, the gold ah. one, so I can play with you. Awesome. Um, one of the big things that is uh, the costume changes, and <laughs> I posted on our Facebook page. Um, the one I'm excited about most is you get to wear Zelda's dress. Actually, that's actually really cool. <laughs> <laughs> so so small, but I mean, it's. I, I will see what the powers that it gives, because each outfit gives you a different power. But it's like, huh, I'm not sure if that's funny or Nintendo being more accepting, but I'll take it. Um, yeah. Sorry, I was just thinking of Kenny in his dress in the uh, Stick oh. of Truth. I was like, that's really Rinzy's Zelda-y. Theme. Um, the other two big announcements that came out of it, uh, Earthbound uh, Zero is actually going to be released. Um, but for those of you that don't know, the Earthbound we got stateside was actually the second Earthbound. We never had the very first one, which came out on the NES released, or the third one, known as Mother 3, which is where Lucas comes from, from Smash Bros. Never came stateside. So uh, the closest we had to the original Earthbound was, uh, the only way you could play it was pirating it with a uh, fan translation. So they're going to be releasing it to the uh, the virtual console. So I'm excited to play that because, uh, I mean, Earthbound, a very different RPG that doesn't get a lot of love from Nintendo. And this is going to be for the Wii U? Yeah, it's going to be for the virtual console, so it's going to come out to be able to play on the Wii U. How are you going to be able to use the pad and the TV at the same time? 
Is Did, there... Yeah, no, it's easy. You can play on the pad or the TV with most virtual console games. Very easy. Oh, okay. Well, because sometimes they're both interactive. Oh, no, no, no. With Earthbound Zero, it's, it's, uh, it's the NES game that's going to be ported over. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, actually, well, that's one thing with Star Fox Zero is you're playing with both screens. Uh, it's going to... I'm going to see how it goes because I've done it before with a game like uh, The World Ends With You where you're playing it with both screens simultaneously, but it can be kind of, you know, jarring. Um, the other big one is the one that uh, has caused the most controversy for Nintendo. Metroid Prime Federation Force. The soccer game. Um, I'm assuming there's more to this game than what we saw from the Nintendo World Championships. Because all we've seen so far is essentially looks like a soccer mini game. Um, but yeah, no one can make heads or tails of this. And That's no one knows why it's called Metroid. Um, yeah. Uh, the the single player story, assuming it has one, supposed to focus around the Federation, who um, is usually kind of off to the side, excluding in other M, um, and the Space Pirates, the the main villain of Samus. Uh, Samus, we don't think is going to be in it, mm. but yeah, so it's not really going to be a full you know Metroid Prime <laughs> game, and yeah. I was playing a Super Smash Brothers sixty four with my niece, and she's like, "Get that guy, get that guy." I was like, "Which guy?" She's like, "The one with the with the laser gun," and I was like, "That's a girl," and she. What? <laughs> so, uh, we'll come back. We'll talk about uh, Microsoft and Sony next and uh, some of the games that were released. So, of course, you're listening to 102.7 FM, CILU, or around the world at luradio.ca. We're your Thunder Geeks, and we'll be right back. And, of course, we're back. You're listening to 102.7 FM, CILU, or around the world at luradio.ca. That was You've Got a Smile from Fandom Hearts. You always forget the third one. Of course, uh, well, yeah, we're streaming on Periscope right now as well. I'll get used to pimping Periscope. You can follow us on Twitter. We have the link up there. Or go to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash thundergeekspeak. Give us a like. And we got the link right up top there in our post. And you can uh, peep into the video in the studio. You can peep in on us. So, <laughs> so, let, let's let's go here. We got uh, two more press, oh, a couple more press conferences to get through. So, um... Let's talk about the one that I actually like the most. Um, there's always the war between, you know, who won E3? Was it Microsoft or Sony? Definitely wasn't Nintendo this year. No, unfortunately, Sony kind of fizzled. Or, sorry, M- Nintendo kind of fizzled. Yeah, however... But puppets. Eh. No. Microsoft, I am so excited now that I own an Xbox One. Um, Halo 5 Guardians, we've seen uh, some gameplay footage from it. I am absolutely excited for this. Um... I've always been, you know, a big fan of the single player within my Halo because I'm terrible at dying to 13-year-olds in the multiplayer. <laughs> um, however, um, we got to see, I mean, if you watch the trailer that they showed us, well, um, the gameplay that they showed us, uh, quite a bit of hints on how it's going to work for gameplay here. So it seems very co-op focused, um, and it's more of a squad based where you see yourself order uh, on another one of your Spartans with you to go take out a ship. So you have those different commands. So that actually adds like a whole new level of depth to the single player campaign with Halo. This is kind of a, a mechanic you see in some games like Brothers in Arms. Yeah, yeah. And uh, oh, sorry, um, the one that I tried to play and I Resident was Evil? terrible at. No, no, no squad, it's squad base shooter where where you're call, you're playing with a team and you get to call up commands to your to your uh, AI uh, teammates. Um, Left for Dead. No, no, no! It's completely different. <laughs> completely different, Rob. This game was it was very like uh, old timey. There's aliens. Ah, no worries, no yeah. worries. Don't Space you can't even think of it. Um, the other big thing that I noticed uh, was the action set pieces that were taking place during the gameplay. So you saw, you know, um, besides just you know having the map and just having aliens attack, you're seeing things blow up under your feet, debris flying at you while you're running and trying to you know escape this collapsing building. So that's one thing I liked when 343 took over and did Halo 4 is the single player campaign w- campaign was really good at giving us those cinematic moments where it just feels big and epic and grand and I'm hoping that uh, carries over to Halo 5. The Bureau, that's the name of the game. The Bureau. So one of the other big things that I was uh that I was looking at was uh Recore um, not much is known about this. Um, it's by uh, Geiji Inafuna, who did Metroid Prime and also was the creator of Mega Man. Um, we're see- It's hard to say where we're going because it kind of looks post-apocalyptic with like robots and stuff. Very short trailer. 
little cool mechanic they showed because they showed they had the robot sidekick dog that kind of sounded like it was from the Star Wars universe. <laughs> um, during the trailer, it self destructs, and you see this little ball like go to another robot and starts fighting with it. So I'm hoping that's part of the mechanics here, but that game really excites me. Recore, sorry, which one was this again? That was the second one they showed off the uh, Microsoft Con. Uh, it was just announced. Sorry. You didn't watch it? No, no worries. I'm Microsoft, because I don't own Xbox One. So, uh, well. The reason to own a, uh, an Xbox One now, HoloLens. See, this is where, as a non-gamer, I'm actually interested. Yeah, um, HoloLens, we talked about this briefly before. It's Microsoft's um, essentially virtual reality uh, entrance into the game here. Um, so they were showing off a tech demo for Minecraft at E3. Um, they started off where, you know, he's just staring at a wall and it creates the screen on the wall where he could now see, you know, his Minecraft game. Then he takes that, puts it onto a table, and it recreates the Minecraft world brick by brick with his other person on the stage who's playing on her tablet. He can now watch her playing Minecraft from, like, a godlike perspective over, over top of it. So that kind of technology for games like Sims, wow, there is so much, not even just gaming potential, just practical use with this Practical, but can you imagine... I'm not a fan of them, but a first-person shooter like that, especially if you had, like, the motion gun where you actually move your head to look around. Yeah. VR seems to be the way of the future right now, and there's so many coming out. I'm really excited to see what they're doing. I have doing. to make this joke because you said it. Hmm. We are VR. Ah, terrible, Rob. <laughs> terrible, terrible. Am I the only one that watched VR Troopers? I watched VR Troopers as a kid, but I watched it, or uh, I've seen episodes soon enough where I remember how terrible it was. Well, yeah, it was an early Saban show. <laughs> My worry with virtual reality is that it's going to make people's eyes like really buggy. Like, you know, some people can't handle the 3D on the 3DS. Mm -hmm. I turn it off and on, but some people can stare oh. at it. For, like, oh, I turn it off all the time just yeah. because I want to hold it at the most inconvenient angle possible. So <laughs> I only turn it on for cutscenes. Um, the other big thing that came out of Microsoft is that they remembered that they owned Rare. Because, I mean, we haven't heard much from Rare Studios since, like, Cameo. They've been off making, like, the Microsoft Avatar things. The, you know, the rip-off Miis that everyone forgot about within, you know, a year. I was always jealous of people with an Xbox 360 because they got those little guys. And I was like, I want an Avatar. Yeah, I mean, I dressed mine up once and then forgot about them and went back to gaming. So, I mean, not a bad idea, but it's been taking up so much of Rare's time. Um, they're doing uh, this compilation game for Rare where they're releasing 30 of Rare's games for 30 bucks. I guess that's a good deal, but I mean... And then they have an MMO coming from Rare. Uh, it's a pirate theme MMO. Maybe. I'm not sure. We didn't really see much about it in terms of gameplay. Um, I'm not opposed to a pirate MMO, but... Rare... I haven't seen much coming out of Rare for a while, so we'll see how this goes. I'm more <laughs> excited for uh, the guys that left the studio and is making ukulele. Oh, ukulele is going to be the new Banjo-Kazooie. Essentially, yeah. So uh, that was a bunch of uh, developers that left Rare and formed their own studio. Yeah, so that, that's where ukulele comes from and why they're not making Banjo-Kazooie. Ukulele is like a chameleon? He plays a chameleon or something? Yep. Uh, well, you're playing the two characters. But yeah, it's essentially the same idea as you have with uh, Banjo-Kazooie. Um, the other big one. So this is the big argument of who won. Was it Sony or Microsoft? I'm leaning towards Microsoft because HoloLens really looks really cool. ReCore looks really cool. And I'm, I'm a Halo fanboy. Um, since I was introduced to the first game, uh, that's what really got me into shooters. I wasn't a big shooter fan at first. I mean, I played GoldenEye. I played Doom. But I didn't really play much else. After Halo, I got into a lot more. And that's how I got so good at Splatoon. You know who won E3? Bethesda. Bethesda. We'll Bethesda. Get, we'll get to Fallout 4 in a, in, in a second, because we did talk about Fallout 4 a bit at the end of the last show here, but I want to talk about the Sony press conference first. Um, first thing is The Last Guardian isn't dead. It's. I'm so excited. I've been excited for this game for a while now. And yeah, yeah, because they, they announced it way, way, way back, I think in 2009 in E3 for the PS3. It looked absolutely astounding, and then nothing. After playing Never Alone, it's only made me more excited for The Last Guardian because it's the same kind of mechanics. You play as a young kid and you have to... There's a, a spirit or something that follows you and helps yeah. you. Yeah, the, the one thing that I'm... We still don't really know about much about The Last Guardian. Like we see, At least we've seen gameplay now and we know that's actually working. Apparently, they switched development uh, back to the... Well, to the PS4 back in 2012. So that's why we haven't heard anything because it's been in the back room cooking. I'm hoping this is not going to turn out to be a Duke Nukem Forever situation where we've been waiting 10 years for this game and when it finally comes out, it's like, eh, well, it's out. Oh, well, there it is. 
A uh, Duke Nukem Forever is, is fun. I'm sorry, I just like that game. One one big announcement that they released, I mean, it's not on most people's radars because it doesn't apply to majority of gamers or PlayStation owners. However, it's a really big move for Sony, and it's PlayStation View. Um, what they're offering, it's also going to depend on what channels they're allowed to offer. Um, they're open in some of the bigger markets. Uh, they announced that they're going to be opening in LA in the uh, in, uh, some point. PlayStation is going to allow you to subscribe to individual cable channels. No way. And not package them together. I cut my cord a long time ago. This probably is not going to make me go back, but this is something that people have been asking for cable companies forever. Unpackage the channels. I don't want 500. I don't want to watch Sportsnet. I just want three channels. I just want YTV, Teletoon, and probably Fox. What about Discovery? Eh. And the Food Network and oh and, yeah, Food Network too because I like food porn. Time Time Channel, uh, the old. But yeah, so I mean, most of the channel, m- most of us never watch majority of the channels we see on TV. So this, I mean, I see this as a move pro- uh, almost as big as Google Fiber. If my, um, Sony is successful at this, they could you know really disrupt cable co- uh, companies' monopolies. So that's interesting to see. However, um. Shenmue 3 is finally going to happen. I I know a lot of people have no idea what Shenmue is. It was a classic game. Um, It was Grand Theft Auto before Grand Theft Auto. uh, Open world game for the Dreamcast. And it ended on a cliffhanger. So we never actually got the ending for Shenmue 3. And it's been one of those things where we've all assumed it's been dead for a long time. I'm kind of iffy of them announcing it at E3. Because obviously that's going to get fun. It's like, Sony, come on, you have the money. But the fact that it's going to happen and, and it got funded pretty much immediately i'm happy we're finally gonna get a, get a conclusion to the shenmue story yeah i saw some activity for it and i had no idea what it was but i'm glad that the fans of shenmue are getting what they need what they wanted now one of the games it didn't wow me at first until i looked into it more and saw the impressions of people playing on the floor was uh firewatch um that yeah um that was uh you seem to be playing this uh kind of ranger who's out in the wilderness and you know uh, you're the one who watches for fire. He stands up in the big wooden towers. He used to have him on the Red Green Show. Smokey the Bear? Well, no, like, he, he would be up in, like, the wooden towers out in the middle of the forest, you know, looking for forest fires. Smokey the Bear? Smokey the Bear doesn't live in a watchtower. Smokey the Bear does. Oh, okay. I know nothing about Smokey. No one cares about Smokey the Bear. That'd be terrifying. You just walk into one of those wooden towers and there's a bear in there. Rawr! Well, maybe that's who messed it up, because that's one of the things with this game is that it's, um... Very much depending on your relationship with Delilah, who's the one you're hearing over the, uh the walkie-talkie. Um, what you're doing is you're exploring this area, and as you find things, you're talking with her, and you actually get a choice of your dialogue, and how you speak to her defines your relationship. And that seems to be where the main focus of the game is being, and also you have this apparently strange intruder that they hint to at the end of the trailer there that's been skulking around, so it's something more is going on with this game. I'm hoping it's going to be you know more psychological like Alan Wake was, but I... I was iffy on it at first. I'm more excited now that I've seen more from it. My my prediction is that Delilah is a figment of your imagination. Mm-hmm. And um, maybe the figure is, or maybe we're dealing with Sasquatch or it, it, um, aliens. I, I hope it's not said just Sasquatch. <laughs> so, the other two, uh, well, I'll, I'll skip the EA one. Um, Ubisoft, uh, EA, psh, I, I, I have, I don't what care. What did they even have? Uh, sports, sports, uh, sports. And nobody stuff. cares. EA, stop it. Nobody plays sports games. Actually, lots of people play sports games. Uh, bro dudes. As much as I am not a bro dude person, they are definitely part of the gaming core. Now we cannot deny that they are here to stay. They, you know, they play right alongside us. They definitely play sports games. Oh yeah, we're freaks, but they're totally cool. Totally cool. But uh, um, I know with Ubisoft, um. They're mostly Assassin's Creed, and I think that's a uh, fractured butthole. Star Park. <laughs> I'm the fractured butthole. Yes. There's no way you can say it without it. No, no, I'm gonna say fractured butthole. Uh, that's that's the joke. I'm totally going for it. Um, sequel to the Stick of Truth. Uh, genius trailer they have opening where it seems like it's just gonna be a Stick of Truth game again, and then they release it's going to be the Coon and Friends, one of my favorite um, kind of season arcs for South Park. I was gonna say reoccurring jokes. Well, uh, they they had the episode before where they introduced Mysterion the Rises. Yeah, Myster- oh, actually, yeah, you're right. They've had quite a few with Mysterion Rises as well. Um, mm. Yeah. 
Uh, I know you want to talk about Bethesda, Megan. Um, okay. I just want to say that I am excited for um, Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure why it seems so intriguing, but I just I like the idea of it. It's getting more. It's getting more into our time. I don't know. Anyways, no. Let's talk about Bethesda. Let's talk about Fallout Four. <laughs> so uh, I know they had this. Um, the special edition announced, but they're going to have like a Pip Boy. So I assume yeah. that's you're going to save up for that. I don't think I will, because um, honestly, this Pip Boy that they're offering you with the pre order, um, it is only for iOS, I believe. That's what the rumor was, but I think it's for Android. However, I don't own a phone, so that does that means doesn't, nothing. Doesn't, doesn't, that, doesn't mean anything. That doesn't to mean you. anything to me. Down would, the road, I would maybe. I would rather just make one for my own cosplay. Okay, actually, I was being to EA. EA. Uh, no sports game. Well, one sport game. They had NBA Live there. But uh, the Star Wars game, Star Wars Battlefront. Oh, my gosh, Battlefront. And also uh, the uh, the Old Republic expansion, Knights of the Fallen Empire. That's coming. So, yeah, Star Wars games for EA. <laughs> Battlefront. So excited. Anyways, um, back to Bethesda. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> you are going to play as a human being before the war, actually. Oh, before so the bomb it's a drops. prequel? Yep. And you and your you uh, you can make your character really really awesomely, and it's interesting how they do it. It's in the front of the mirror instead of on a on a screen on a Pip Boy or anything like that too. Um, yeah, and um, after- I thi- for me, Sorry. I think no, no worries, no worries. I think the show stealer though. I want to get this in before we end the show was Squeenix. If I have to give anyone for you know, winning it, because the only reason they're going to argue, so I think so people would argue for Sony winning it was. The Final Fantasy VII remake, um, and it's going to be a remake, not just you know updating the graphics. Apparently, they're going to remaster the entire game. So my big question is, is if they're going to leave in the cross-dressing cloud mission in HD, because back you know in the PlayStation graphics, <laughs> not so bad, and you're going to a brothel in HD. I want to see some sexy cloud here. I remember Ethan and I were watching this trailer, and he's like, "That's not Final Fantasy. No, it's not. It's not Final Fantasy. Oh, what the heck? Why did they make Final Fantasy look so cool? Oh." <laughs> Um, they're also doing uh, Kingdom Hearts three. Uh, we finally got to see, see uh, some legitimate gameplay from Kingdom Hearts three. I am so excited for this game. I'm so excited to finally continue the uh, the saga of Sora because with the 3DS game, eh, I was happy with the story, the gameplay, uh, some of the stuff they threw in there. I'm like really ambivalent to it. I was just happy that we finally got a setup for the next game. And that's where it seems where we're going now. So we don't really have much within story other than they're going to be going to tang- uh, the Tangled World. Um, what would be your hope for a game they're going to include in Kingdom Hearts 3? Uh, I would Star like- Wars. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> With Disney there, they could throw in Star Wars now. They had Tron before I and Pirates of the Caribbean. I didn't like Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, I would really like to see them go to the Princess and the Frog world. Just ah, because I would love to the see... The Bayou. Yes, I'd love to see um, Sora, Goofy, and Donald in like old style clothes and stuff. Yeah, especially with uh, oh, I can't remember his name. Uh, the the voodoo priest. Um, Doctor Facilier. Thank you. He's a wasn't he just the sh- Shadow Man? The, you know, the, the Shadow, Shadow Man. Man. Yeah, he's the perfect villain to control Heartless. You're right. He's so good, and all the Heartless would be super cool and like you know like the the black light. Mm-hmm. Color. And it's Goliath. Oh, he's so great. My hope. The Great Mouse Detective. I, yeah, because, I mean, the clock tower scene, um, that's perfect for, like, the platforming aspect of Kingdom Hearts. Radigan ha- as a villain. They have to find a good Vincent Price. Yes, they're going to have to find a good impersonator for, for Radigan. I think Disney can do it, though. Disney has a pretty wide stable of voice actors. I know, but Vincent Price is just one of those legendary voices. I would like to see Sora as a mouse. Yeah. And not as just a tiny human being. Not, uh, you, that would be my hope as well. You furry. <laughs> You can't... <laughs> don't deny it. I've seen your sketchbook. So, um, some of the other big things. Uh, one that I was really excited about. I never played the Lara Croft reboot, but I know it got a lot of uh, good hype behind it. Seeing the new one they have got coming out... Wow. I have not wanted to play a Tomb Raider so bad since the PlayStation era. You need to watch Conan O'Brien playing Tomb Raider. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> Conan I'm... O'Brien doing anything is funny. This is true. So, guys, who would you say was your winner of E3? Puppets. Pup- no, <laughs> it's, it's not Nintendo. Nintendo is excluded from this. Puppets. Puppets, puppets, puppets. Okay, so Rob's p- opinion is invalid. Megan? Bethesda. Bethesda. 
Why? Is it just Fallout 4? No, it... G- give, yes. give me... It's just Fallout it's 4. It's just Fallout 4. Dude, you can control the dog. You can ask him to go get a wrench, and he'll bring you a wrench. I know the dog won't die. That That's the one thing they announced, that they can't kill the dog. Oh. Well, because cause you could... Because dog meat could die before. Yes. And so could Rex. They didn't want the dog... They didn't want people being sad. Your dog will not die anymore. But it's Fallout. It's post, post-apocalyptic. Your dog will not die anymore. Well, okay. I like that <laughs> idea, because... I don't like... Why do you like killing dogs, no, Megan? No, I'm just saying it needs to be more Megan realistic. the dog killer. No, don't say that. <laughs> so you, you touch butts and you kill dogs, Megan. Jeez. <laughs> she really is a supervillain, isn't she? <laughs> For me, if I'm going from the consoles, I have to say Microsoft. If I'm going in general... Squeenix all the way here. I'm surprised we didn't see anything from Final Fantasy 15 or uh, anything coming from Final Fantasy 14. But I don't think they really needed it with the uh, the other big announcement that they had. I mean, uh, Star Ocean going back to that series, very beloved series. We haven't seen a game in quite a while. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's been a quite a while. Um, I don't know. If E3 this year seemed a little lackluster. Nothing was like, oh my god. South Park. So actually, I'll, I'll, for, for me, I had the opposite reaction. I was pretty excited about a lot of things. My only big letdown was Nintendo because. N- I was getting on board after they've had a quite a few good releases with, uh, you know, Splatoon having an original property out there. I was hoping Nintendo was going to throw more original uh, pro- uh, properties, but I'm guessing everything's kind of getting shifted to the Nintendo NX, which they said they'll talk about next year in 2016. So we'll see when we get more from Nintendo's consoles. But uh, I guess uh, we should wrap up the show here, folks. So final thoughts before we end. Dinosaur! Ah, uh, yeah, we did see Jurassic World this week. We'll talk about it next week. We'll see Inside Out as well, so we'll do a double shot for movie reviews next week. So, I got, folks, I want to thank you for tuning in what once about again. Megan's last words? Megan, what, do you have last words? Bethesda, follow four, that's all. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> Save what. Save Constantine. <laughs> Constantine is dead, Megan. It is dead forever. You can let the dream Sorry, die. Sorry, no, that's just the joke, is that's all I'm all about. Just follow up Bethesda and save Constantine. That's all Sad. I'm about. So, um, of course, if you want to continue the conversation, you can do so online on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash thundergeekspeak, or follow us on Twitter at thundergeeks. If you follow us on Twitter, you'll also see when we post our Periscope link, and you can watch the video in the studio. Um, our very last song here, uh, gonna be a Star Wars song, just because who doesn't love Star Wars? It's gonna be, uh, The Force Pull by Megaran, and of course, folks, tune in next week, Sundays as always, at 10.30 to your friendly neighborhood, uh, Thunder Geeks. Have a great week. <laughs>